everybody. Welcome. Uh, yes, this is actually, you didn't tune in to the wrong channel. This is Laughter Talks. But we, and when I say we, I mean, let me introduce myself first. I'm going to be a real skank. I am Marguerite Fair, but not anymore when you see this show. I am now Granny Tino. And uh, Sam, introduce yourself. Tell them who you really are and who you now are. Oh, I am Sam Wagoner, but now I am Ms. Felina Katz. Meow! Okay, so everyone, you've heard it here first. And what we are doing is we are now doing, on the last Monday of every month, we will be presenting uh, Netflix movie reviews. And we are going to review two movies that we have watched prior to taping this show and let you know our opinions about it and what's going on. Okay, so our first, um, we're going to throw the ball over to Miss Felina Katz, and she is going to, yeah, oh, there's a little pussy cat. She is going to be reviewing, and I'll review right after her, a Cadaver, okay, and it's a horror film, so the, you go. Cadaver, that is a spooky horror genre film. It begins in the aftermath of a nuclear holocaust and uh, showing how grim life has become with many bodies just lining the streets and fights breaking out. And it's sort of a reminder of our current situation with COVID a little bit. Yeah. 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 Food is scarce. Suddenly, the main characters, Leonora and uh, Jacob, a family of three, gets invited to a dinner and a show by a creepy stranger. Stranger danger. Hmm. They decide to go with their little girl, Alice, and uh, not sure where the money from the, for the tickets came from, actually, but they wanted some enjoy. Jacob and Alice accept the odd invitation to dinner and a show and encounter a strange rather creepy individual named Matthias at the posh hotel where they went. Trying to be hopeful, despite or against all odds, they attend the event wanting to believe that things will work out. Mm -hmm. At dinner, yeah, they hungrily devour what is um, known as some mystery meat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where did they get this meat? Or did they really want to know? Actually, they didn't seem to want to know. They were told that the hotel was actually the stage and the staff was all the actors. So the guests have to wear masks and uh, in order to differentiate from the staff and not get mixed up with the guests. So they wander around and it kind of reminded me a little of Eyes Wide Shut by Stanley Kubrick. Mm -hmm. Interesting, very, very well done as far as the sets were concerned. It was beautiful. As they maneuver through the rooms, it becomes really clear that it's like an escape room and a lot of people were not escaping. So they lose track of their daughter, Alice, and it seems that they might have had a better handle on you know, her whereabouts since that was her, their child. So there were interesting twists and turns and a rather predictable ending, but I liked it. I give it a solid three cattails. Oh. One, two. Okay, well now I've also, I've watched it and I've written a report. So let me read mine and then we'll see what I, how, how many I've given it because I give it hands and no fingers, we do fingers. Okay, so. Cadaver. I put cadaver or cadaver because uh, the movie is actually called Cadaver with the C. Yeah. But then when you go into the movie, it has it with a K. Yeah. I so uh, I figured the reason I like this movie right out of the gate is because I could spell it any way I want. Okay. So let me give my, I wrote this out here. So a nuclear disaster sets the world into a depressed spin of gloom brought upon by the threat that has hung over our heads since mankind started their love affair with the atomic bomb. Um, a national theater looms in the darkness in the center of a desolate town. Depressed, barely functioning people are offered a moderate escape 
from their newly defined world of ongoing gray haze. When the theater company presents a special interactive theater presentation, much like the one we're in right now, the story seems innocent enough as people pay what they can afford to attend a live interactive theater experience preceded by an elegant full course dinner. Whoa. After dinner, the unsuspecting guests are invited to move freely around the Grand Hotel to experience live stories of people interacting in life dramas. Not a bad concept. All they need do is put on their mask so everyone knows who the guests are. You would think that some people might be suspicious about that little fact by now, you know, but to each their own. It quickly becomes apparent that the show is not actually, um, you know, a fun event when a 10 year old girl goes missing into the endless stream of uh, performance rooms. And that is when the panic sets in. Without giving too much away, I don't want to give anything away, like I haven't already, perhaps the screaming that starts in the background is when people get the feeling that there may be no such thing as a free meal, you know. Um, mm -hmm. The moral of this story is that it should be clear that an atomic blast pretty much ends the animal food chain source. If you are a horror fan of movies, that makes you feel comfortable knowing that all films eventually mimic life, knock yourselves out. It is a different kind of horror story. Now, Granny Tino gives this a three finger rating. Um, <laughs> a, a similar to, uh, to uh, Miss Feline, or Felina, um, but uh, again, just make sure that you do take your antidepressants before you see this movie. But yeah, so yeah, so we ended up giving it the same rating. You know, you gave it three cattails and I gave it three fingers. And yeah, um, yeah so that's, uh, that's, uh, was there anything in particular that, that you fancied about this or that I know you said you liked something? What was it you liked? Um, the, the sets were really done beautifully in the hotel and they used the um, contrast of how things really were in the actual life that they were leading because yeah. people were in the streets and they were just, you know, having a horrible life and yeah. many of them were dying. So yeah. it was a contrast yeah. and that was really well done, yeah. I think. I think so too. I think that... Um... Uh, it really did reflect it. It pulled you into it. That's why I said, take your antidepressants before you go see the movie, because it is, it's, you know, it's a very well-made horror film, I think. And yeah. just, as you said, it's really, their set design is incredible. It just pulls you right into the story. Yeah. So I think yeah. we both agree that for our Netflix picks, we both recommend that this is a movie worth seeing. Yeah. 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 I like it. And, yeah. uh, you know, I'm kind of more of a fan of horror anyway, but, um, this was, very different and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah it was I think I, I never was a fan of horror and I'm starting to like them because they are making them like this they're mm -hmm. really this is like a, a story you've got a story uh, you've got people that you can relate to during the times and it's not like the old-fashioned horror stories where you stick a couple people or a bunch of teenage kids out in a cabin in the woods and everybody's screaming it's something different yeah. You have to think a little bit about what's going on, and I like that. So that's really good. So, wow, I think we did a good job on that. Okay, yeah. so now we're going to go. We are switching from horror. Um, we decided that we would do a comedy. And the comedy that we opted to watch is Holiday. And again, I'm going to put this over to our lovely little Miss Felina, and you read your review for us for Holiday, a romantic comedy. Okay. <laughs> wow, Holiday. Um, that's a rom-com. Meow. <laughs> um, not really a rom-com fan, but this was rather cute, kind of lighthearted film. The premise is two people meet casually and decide to become each other's holiday, <laughs> which is a date for the holidays only with no real commitment as explained to them at one point by their aunt, yeah. uh, by her aunt. 
So it's starring Emma Roberts as Sloan and Luke Bracey as Jackson. They attend family holidays while Sloan's mom, Frances Fisher, continues to try to fix her up with a real date. <laughs> meow. So she was really kind of meow, this woman. Uh, lots of raunchy jokes and foul languages kept it from becoming a real bore as far as I was concerned. Meow. Yeah. <laughs> was a ball in your throat. Meow. <laughs> yeah, it's a <clears throat> cat, cat ball, cat fur. <laughs> <laughs> so my, um, there was a lack of chemistry between the two leads that was supposed to have changed at the end, but it still fell, you know, a little flat. So, yeah, so they used a lot of cliches from films like Dirty Dancing, Nobody Puts Baby in a Corner, and uh, in a dance scene, and her dress falls to expose her boobs. So, I mean, you I know. I that part. I must have blinked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't see the boobs. It's just implied, actually. <laughs> so then they fall because her boobs popped out. Her boobs so fall? Anyway, <laughs> what? Her boobs fall? Supposedly, but you know, you don't see it. Okay. It just is implied, you know, uh, from the look on her yeah, face. I'm from Jersey. I need things spelled out. And <laughs> from the look on their faces, it's like boobs fall out, I'm dancing, and she's on top of the guy that she's supposed to have a holiday date with and not re any real commitment. So, you know, there's a lot of drunken revelry, which was kind of fun. And they also have King Batch as Jackson's golf pro sidekick. And he was pretty funny. I think he should have had more lines, but um, I've worked with him before on another film and I think has a lot more to offer than what they had put in for him. So all in all, I give it um, two tails and two cat tails and one fish. Oh, well, Granny Tina will tell you where to shove that fish. I don't quite agree with Miss uh, Felina, so I'm going to read my review because <laughs> I'm Granny Tino. So this is the Holiday review from Granny Tino. Okay, Holiday, a new original Netflix movie. What can I say? It has been a long time since I've watched a romantic comedy. I stopped exposing myself to RCs because I was bored with cookie cutter love stories, especially the ones that uh, based around Christmas. I knew if I saw one more overly happy couple wearing gross Christmas sweaters, making out under a branch of mistletoe, I might actually hurt myself. Uh, and seriously, I'm from Jersey. I can do that, okay? Well, I am happy to report that Holiday was actually funny and fell off the assembly line of crummy, predictable romantic comedies. The concept of two people coming together who are revolted by the aspect of being humiliated every holiday because they are single was refreshing. The godfather himself, Vito Corlone, would not have loved this movie more than seeing a head horse on the bed of his enemy. Emma Roberts and Luke Bracey, the main stars of this movie, are delightful when they accidentally meet while returning gifts at a local mall. How could two disgruntled, miserable, holiday-hating people not feel the sting of Cupid's arrow? Immediately engaging in a conversation of, you know, being holiday, hate, holiday haters, it soon led to a business agreement by each other to be each other's dates for every boring, ridiculous, man-made to be singles feel bad holiday on the calendar. <laughs> and so these two non-romantic, morbid, and completely depressed people form a pact to create the unique experience of holidating. And I'm all for that. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, here in the real world, it sounds like a good solution to an old-time problem. It beats the hell out of the way Vino Corleone would have handled it. Trust me. Granny mm -hmm. Tino gives this a four fingers rating. And mm -hmm. you can do a lot with four fingers. <laughs> okay, so 
Yeah, so yeah, I, I disagree a little bit with you. You gave it two uh, cattails, but you're a cat. So, you know, cats don't know much. <laughs> I'm a person. Yeah, I'm a person from Jersey, so I gave it four. So what was it? Now, you said that what you didn't really care for, there was some, so tell me, what was it to you that made you not be swung over by it? You seem to think... Well, it just went on and on with the many different holidays that they were attending that were just like over the top. I mean, St. Patrick's Day. The, what family celebrates everything <laughs> like that? Um, it, it just seemed really like they were pushing holidays on these people just to like put them together. <laughs> well, that's what made them fall in love. That that was the concept of the movie. I think that's why it was written that way because it, you figure, yeah. I guess the movie is shown. It's like it would be what twelve dates they went through this like for a year because they covered all these holidays. Yeah. So it took them every time they went. They had to go to all the holidays because that's how they were developing their relationship. And then they slowly, well, to me, you know, they slowly started to realize that they were falling in love, but. I really did love that because I know a lot of single people who always really felt bad around the holidays because they didn't have dates. And according to the other romantic holiday movies, when you go home for Christmas, the mother always is wondering, when do you get married and where's her grandchildren? Like there's nothing else in life. So yeah, that, that seems a little odd to me. Like, you know, people have their lives and, you know, what if it doesn't, you know, necessarily you know, go well with having children and being married all the time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, but you know, that's the way it works. Mm -hmm. We all get different, you know, takeouts from it. And it's good because what we're doing is reviewing the movies and, and then everybody can balance it out and see mm -hmm. it for themselves. So that's really a good idea. Now, I'm actually uh, going to uh, let you sit here for a second. I want to tell everybody what we're doing at the end of the year, and I forgot to bring it with me. So Granny Tina is gonna make a slick move. I'm here now, and now I'm moving. <laughs> That's okay, I have toys. <laughs> You're a cat. Miss Felina always entertains herself, I found out. She always has something to play with. Look at her, she is adorable. She, she's my new pet. You know what's great about this? I don't have to feed her. I don't have to take her to the vet. She just entertains herself. Look at this. And she does magic shows. You, you do magic shows with your ears. They kind yeah. of, they yeah. much, much like you, Felina, they go in and out of reality. Mm. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> see, everybody, see, see this? Now, Miss Felina is giving uh, cattails and she's playing with her fish now, which I love to see. It keeps her happy. But the end of the year, we are going to have around Oscar time. And this year, um, I believe the date is April uh, 26th or uh, in April, mm -hmm. the Oscars are. But what we're going to do the day after the Oscars will be Monday. And we're going to have our own Netflix present presented the special Netflix movie that we both agree on that we like the best. And they get a special five finger salute. Now... <laughs> This is it. This is what we will honor them with. This is a Granny Tino five finger, um, or I guess you could say five fingers or one hand <laughs> salute for the best Netflix film. And it's not going to be easy because Netflix has a lot of good stuff out there. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's gotten oh, more and We're going to do that. And we're going to have a big celebration for this too. We're going to be dressed and um, we're going to get a Tomcat for Miss Felina. And we might get, some, you know, big, <laughs> handsome movie star for me. And we're going to have a celebration for this award right around the Oscars. So I think this is going to be fantastic. So um, I, I do want to let everybody know, I'd like to show you my rating system. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes from one to five fingers. So if your film is so bad and I see it, I'm not going to give you a zero. I'm going to give you one finger. This is a one finger Granny Tino rating. The middle finger? Yeah, the two finger, the three finger, the four finger, and the five finger. When you get a five finger, that's how it leads to this award. 
So it's really Ooh. something. Wow. Oh, look at that. I've got two hands. <laughs> <laughs> one is shiny. Huh? I, I like the shiny one. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, we make things happen at, at uh, you know, the studio here. I just, you know, but it's, wouldn't it be lovely to have that on your shelf? Look, that would be a real honor for anyone. Yeah. I mean, seriously. <laughs> and if somebody makes you mad, you can always play with it at a party. You know, you can go like this. Does that look cool? <laughs> or if someone's <laughs> annoying you, you can uh, you know, uh, their nose or yeah. scratch, scratch. scratch their hands. So yeah, I think, yeah, that's it. Well, this has been super amazing. You know, I'm yeah. so glad we did this and um, I hope everyone likes it. And what we're going to do is come back every last Monday of every month for the rest of your lives. As long yeah. as you live, we... Yeah. And I just love Miss Felina's ears. I mean, the woman is, ma the, the cat is magic. She's a magic pussy. Oh, oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, you you know my secrets. There you go. I'll tell you, I'm loving it. Well, this yeah. is uh, what we're going to do for today. We're going to end our show. And remember, we, there is now a Granny Tino um, YouTube station. And we also continue the Laughter Talk station. And uh, these posts will go on both of them. So when yeah. you subscribe to Laughter Talks, you're subscribing also to Granny Tino and her sidekick pet here, Miss Felina Katz. So we want to, see you. we want to see you next time. Keep coming back. We love you. Stay healthy. And see you next time. That's it. See you at the movies. Bye. Bye.